the most important part is to graph everything from scratch to analyze and understand what's going on here for your visualization. So here you have your x, y axis, then you have your sine x, and please note that x ranges between 0 and pi over 4, so you don't have to go further. This is my sine function between 0 and pi over 2, and pi over 4 is just in between, and then cosine 2x behaves like this. So for cosine, when x is equal to 0, your cosine is 1, and it hits x-axis at pi over 4, not pi over 2. So this part is pi over 4, right? And then you want to know what is the intersection between these two graphs, because the top function is cosine 2x, and here you have your sine x, So we want to know at what value they intersect. What is this intersecting point here? Because this helps us when you're dividing the graph into two pieces, you need to know what is this intersecting point between them so you can set up your integrals correctly. So to find that, you need to set sine x equals to cosine 2x. But from pre-calculus, you know that cosine 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So you're setting sine x equals to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. This is basically a quadratic equation. 2 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 is equal to 0. This is basically writing it in the form that you have 2u squared plus u minus 1 equal to 0. You can write this in factored form as 2u minus 1 times u plus 1 and set it equal to 0. But your u is sine x. So if you substitute this guy back, you have 2 sine x minus 1 times sine x plus 1. Equal to 0. But from the second equation, you have 2. sine x minus 1 equal to 0, or sine x is a half. In the first quadrant that everything is positive, x is equal to pi over 6. So we found the intersecting point here, pi over 6. So now you can divide up your regions into two regions, everybody. So one region is the region on the left hand side where you have cosine 2x on top and down you have sine x the second region you have sine x on top and down here you have cosine 2x so the integral is divided up into two pieces a is equal to the integral between 0 to pi over 6 of the region here the larger y value is cosine 2x, the smaller y value is sine x, so minus sine x dx plus the second integral, which is from pi over 6 to pi over 4, the top function is sine x, and the larger function, the top function is sine x, and the smaller function is cosine 2x. So you have sine x minus cosine 2x dx. So we need to calculate these one by one and then add the values to find the area. So a is equal to. But remember that to calculate the integral of cosine 2x, 
in general the integral of cosine ax dx is 1 over a sine ax plus c. This is just basic you saw. So you get a half sine 2x. Let me write it nicely. And here you have plus cosine x. The integral of negative sine is cosine. And this guy ranges between 0 to pi over 6 plus. Now for the second integral, let us open parentheses. The integral of sine is negative cosine x and negative cosine 2x is negative a half sine 2x and x ranges between pi over 6 to pi over 4. Now let us plug in these values. I'm going to use different colors to make sure I'm plugging everything correctly and helps me to do the computation. So first I'm going to plug in pi over 6. So if I plug in pi over 6, I have a half sine of pi over 3 plus cosine of pi over 6. And then I'm going to plug in 0. So minus a half sine of 0, which is 0, plus cosine of 0. Plus, now I'm going to calculate the second integral. So I'm going to use a different color, like red. I'm going to plug in pi over 4. So this is going to be negative cosine of pi over 4 minus a half sine of 2 pi over 4, which is sine of pi over 2. And then minus, now I'm going to plug in pi over 6. So I get minus negative cosine of pi over 6 minus a half sine of pi over 3. Okay, perfect. So the area is equal to. So here, if we do the computation, you have a half square root of 3 divided by 2 plus square root of 3 divided by 2. Let's close up the parenthesis. Minus, so this is just 0. You get a 1 minus 1. Cosine of 0 is equal to 1. Then plus, let us move on to the red quantity. Here you have negative cosine of pi over 4, which is negative square root of 2 divided by 2. And this is going to be just negative a half because this is 1. Close up the parenthesis and minus the last portion, which we need more space for. Negative cosine pi over 6, which is negative square root of 3 divided by 2. And here you have negative a half square root of 3 divided by 2. Okay, perfect. So let us continue the computation. So A is equal to, you have... So if you take common denominator, you get 3 square root of 3 divided by, let me see, you get 5. Let me correct this. So we are taking the common denominator of 4 here between these. So we have square root of 3 divided by 4 plus 2 square root of 3 divided by 2. Then I combine it with the rest of these. But for now, let me just write them down. Negative 1 and then here. So you get negative square root of 2 divided by 2 minus a half. And when you combine these together, you get plus square root of 3 divided by 2 plus square root of 3 divided by 4. But do we have anything to cancel out? Well, here I have just these values, right? So let me move this up. My a is equal to... And this guy should be 4. And then, yes, now it makes sense. So this is 2 square root of 2 divided by 4. I'm just combining these four terms together. So you get 6. 
square root of 3 divided by 4, negative 3 halves minus square root of 3 divided by 2, which is 3 square root of 3 divided by 2, minus 3 halves minus square root of 3 divided by 2, but I can combine these two as well, am I right? I thought I have a square root of 2. Where did it go? Oh, I forgot to add it here. Okay. See, we made a mistake here. I forgot my square root of 2 here, but that's fine. We caught it very fast. So here we found 6 square root of 3 divided by 2 minus 3 halves minus square root of 2 divided by 2 and this is 3. For now let me write it as 4 to avoid any confusion. 3 is square root of 3 divided by 2 minus 3 halves minus square root of 2 divided by 2 and if I factor out a half I get 3 square root of 3 minus 3 minus square root of 2 which is the area of this object that we have here. Okay. As you can see we have a lot of algebra involved. Let's make it a little bit smaller so you can see the whole page with the question.